Okay, great. Well, hopefully you have an idea what's happening in the urban metabolism field, how things work. Um, you've seen these different projects that are happening in Cape Town, and we've discussed some of the issues, the challenges that exist. So I'll be showing you a project that we've been working on with Metabolism of Cities to address some of these, these challenges. Um, so let me first, and this, this uh, uh, platform is called Multiplicity. I hope you enjoyed the pun as much as I do. Um, so before we go there, let me explain a bit about our organization. So Metabolism of Cities, Lauren mentioned a, a, something that started as a band of people. And I think that's quite an accurate description. Um, it's very much a project that came up as a passionate side hobby of a number of researchers who all worked in urban metabolism and who felt that it's great to get together and to jointly do things. And our main and first project was to put information that we all gathered and we, that we all came across on an online open source website. So we were all doing research and we found literature scattered around and we figured, let's put a database of what literature exists and how it relates online. From there, we started growing and adding other tools and, and sections to the website. And we started adding more people as well, bit by bit, and most people located in different countries. So none of us meeting uh, initially. And over the years, we've met a, a number of times now. But we remain a group of people who get together out of passion to work on urban metabolism. And who very much, it, this links back to Sarah's comment, we very much care about accessibility of the field itself, accessibility of information, accessibility, accessibility of data. So we try and build generally online tools that help address that. So that's the core of our, our project. We are strong believers in, in open source, in open access. So we bring that in. And yeah, we, we think urban metabolism is interesting and has a lot of potential. And we also think there are challenges. And we try to work in that space. And Collaboration is key in what we do. So that's a, a quick background on metabolism of cities. Um, here you can see we defined a goal for our group, for our organization. So as you can see here, to collaborate on systematically improving the sustainability of cities, you got to aim high, by creating and sharing urban metabolism knowledge and accelerating its implementation in policy and practice. Now, you can see from that that our event today is very much in line with our goal. And it's, it, that's why it was something that we really wanted to organize. And we're very happy that, that we could, because we feel that these kind of events are our attempt to contribute to this implementation in, in uh, policy and practice. Um, now, if you look at this work in urban metabolism, it's come up a number of times that data is an issue. And there are a number of challenges when you do work in urban metabolism around data. So having done an MFA, so material flow analysis, is one of the accounting approaches to urban metabolism in which you draw up a material balance on any scale, but of course in our field on an urban scale. And that needs to be, or is often economy-wide. It's all the materials that go in and out of a city, and it's incredibly difficult to get that data. That applies to Cape Town, but that also applies to Paris or London. In no other place is there a system in place to just track everything. The, the borders, the boundaries are very porous. Everybody goes in and out. Lots of different actors involved, etc. So that makes the, the work of gathering data incredibly time consuming. And lots of researchers spend most of their time not analyzing or interpreting information. They, they spend it collecting data. Not necessarily the best use of time, but it's what you have to do if you want to do this work. At the same time, if you look at policy, for someone in policy to do something with this, you need data first, which means you need time, which means you need money to just get this going. So that's, of course, a limitation. At the same time, even if there is data available, it doesn't mean you can access it. So thinking of material, material and energy flows through a city, Lots of that information sits in private hands 
or in the hands of government agencies who don't necessarily make it publicly available. That is a challenge in itself. And yeah, it makes life even harder if you know that there is data out there, but you just can't get your hands on it. Um, the scatteredness is a problem because we look at the system, we look at all material flows. Well, who's going to have all materials uh, in and out of Cape Town or any city? No one has that level of data. People in the water sector have information on water. And then people on the supply side have data on the supply, and people on the output side have data on output. But that has nothing to do with transport, that has nothing to do with food, that has nothing to do with construction. So it sits in all these different places, and you have to go to all these different places to get your data and put it together bit by bit. Lastly, formatting. So you'll see some data published in a beautiful government report, which is actually some sort of a scanned version of a table. Well, you have absolutely no way of getting that into your system other than typing that over. You have other people who publish it at least as a spreadsheet, but you'll also see all kinds of other this georeference data that comes in the form of a shapefile. Um, there are all kinds of different formats in how the data is packaged and also different formats in how data is being published. The goal of many organizations is not to provide data for urban metabolism researchers. They have other goals and they publish based on their needs or their, their users' needs. So a wastewater treatment work may publish data on the um, contaminants in the outflow, but they will say percentages. They will not report on the total quantity that flows out in that particular material out of their wastewater treatment work. Um, and you'll see all these different users report in different ways, so you have to calculate, you have to do all kinds of applications of, of um, massaging the data to get it in the right format. Uncertainty is a whole other issue, um, but you'll see it's difficult. This whole data picture is difficult, but fundamental. We need to get these numbers, otherwise we can't do our work. Remember our, peri our pyramid. So um, if we look at this pyramid, we, if you have paid attention, you remember that this whole data bit is part of the foundation, having systems to record it. But as we go up, you also see information about the visualizations, also important. It helps engage people with this, make it understandable. Now, remembering this and remembering the difficulty with data, we figured, okay, we need to try and do something that can help address these challenges. And given the fact that we do things online, and we run a website, we figured a potential way of doing this is by developing an online system that helps address some of these, these challenges. So we came up with this idea, this system we called Multiplicity, which is basically a data-driven online dashboard for urban metabolism. So the core features of this, at number one, we talk about this needs to be user-friendly. This is not for researchers. This is not only for researchers. We want this to be accessible by anybody who has no clue what urban metabolism is and still feel this is interesting and engaging and useful. At the same time, we do want it to be something that researchers can engage with. So we, we come from an academic background and we need that academic rigor in our system. So even though there's nice images and, and scrollable maps, we also need to be able to go dive into the data and see where does it come from, how is it generated, what is the reliability, etc. Um, remember, we believe in open source and open access, so that applies to our system as well, to anything that we develop, licensed as open source, and we, our goal is to make this data more publicly available. Um, so, community driven. We can't do this by ourselves. You've seen how much time it takes to gather data. Well. If it takes so much time, why don't we try and involve more people, spread the work? So you must have heard of the idea of, of crowdsourcing something, and we feel we can apply the same methodology to urban metabolism data. For some of the things, you need to have advanced degrees to understand what's happening. But for many things, you don't. And there are lots of things related to urban metabolism. You can see from all the discussions that lots of information and knowledge can sit with people who just know something about something, and that's already useful. So to give an example, when we study urban metabolism, I would love to know where wastewater treatment works are located, just knowing where they are, what their name is, where I can find them. That's incredibly useful. And you can find it on the website of the government. But that's the kind of stuff that takes time to put together. 
you can find a company having published a, in their annual report data on their local, we have a brewery in Cape Town, so they publish data on how much beer they brew here in Cape Town. That's incredibly useful. But it just sits in this hidden away report that just requires someone to go there and get that out. So we feel we need to harness people's enthusiasm and interest in this field and say, well, anybody can help because we need so many pieces of the puzzle that don't need advanced training. And whatever training you need, we're here to help. So, replicable and scalable. If we think of cities and if we think of urban metabolism work, we often encounter, when we try to do comparisons between cities, we encounter problems that cities are so different that it's very difficult to compare. And urban metabolism in itself is already trying to make that easier because of indicators and because of things like that. But basically the standard situation, if you try to just compare cities, you, you're talking about you're trying to compare apples and forklifts. <laughs> what we hope to achieve is that we can compare apples and bananas. That would be great. So then we're already getting somewhere that makes things better. And in this whole field, there is no such thing as perfect, but at least if we advance things, we get to the next level of understanding that's already better than where we are now. So, replicable and scalable, we want to roll this out not for one city, but for a number of cities. And in principle, we've set up this online platform that allows people to put data in for Cape Town, just as well as Oslo and Mexico City and Bogota. Doesn't matter. The idea is that any city can do this, and of course there are local nuances to take into account, but we are there to adjust to the local nuances so that at least we can see what's happening in different cities. You have the same data set and you can see it across the board. So, we've been working on this for about a year now. It came to our minds a bit, more than a year ago, and we started working on it as a group of people, as an unfunded endeavor, just to try and get this out. It's still in a prototype version, and we still feel there's so much more to do, but you gotta start somewhere. And you gotta, with these kind of things, we can tell people about it, but the best way is to show people what we have in mind, so that people see what's happening, and they can envision better what our final goal is. So, let us go and see some of these things. So, I know the screen may be difficult to see, but you can check things out later, um, as this is also online. Um, I need just help from Aris finding a right button on this computer, as it has a French keyboard. <laughs> Can you just do control plus a couple of times to make the, okay. So, in our dashboard, we have started working with Cape Town, because, well, I'm located here and you've seen there's a number of researchers in the city making data on Cape Town relatively abundant. Um, so we figured, let's start loading some of the data that we have on there. Let's start seeing how things um, look for Cape Town, and then we can take it from there. Now, this system is in our website, in the Cities tab, where you can then see an initial dashboard that shows a little bit of the city. Okay, here we see the other cities that exist in the system as well. You can see we're working on a number of other cities that we have lined up with the project we're doing starting at the end of the year. Uh, and we've also been working with the city of The Hague in the Netherlands, uh, where we've also set up a kickstarted the first initial round of, of data. So, if we look at the platform, it starts out by a simple homepage that shows a photo, a map, and in which we describe or list a number of sectors that are relevant to urban metabolism. Many sectors, nearly all, but not all, many sectors are relevant to urban metabolism because Nearly every sector uses resources in one way or another. So our ultimate goal is that on this website you can find information on any sector that you're interested in. And you can find all information on that sector from an urban metabolism point of view. So what kind of information? Well, you can see on the left, one thing is data sets. So that kind of you know, spreadsheets and whatever information we can find on that sector, on, on people in that sector, on, on flows that go through. But that, that's not the only thing. So Mapping things out, wonderful, useful. We want maps on there. We also figure out, we want to figure out what research has been done and catalog for each city, what journal articles are there, what reports are there, to have people done theses on the, on the city, etc. cetera. Um, remember, we want this to be accessible to anybody and just photographic appeal helps a lot. And all these places, I mean, I don't know if you've been here into these, these different, um, the, the wastewater treatment works over there, 
it's great to see that. And how many people know what a wastewater treatment plant looks like, even though every day they depend on it. So just putting up photos of, of the infrastructure that goes with this is incredibly interesting. At the same time, if you think of different cities, I would love to see, apparently, in Brussels, they incinerate all their waste. I have no idea what an incinerator looks like. So if I could go on a platform and just even if all I do is browse photos, I think we already bring people a bit closer to the idea of resources and the infrastructure that's behind it and how things move through a city. Okay, so I'll show one of the sectors that we've set up in Cape Town that we started setting up. So oh, let me go up. So now we're in the water section. So what we do is we try and describe how does water move through and what is related to the water industry in, in this case, Cape Town. So we then have to describe the process or the life cycle of water. There are a number of ways of doing it, but one of the first things we do is we try and describe the different bits and pieces that are related to that process. So water is first in the catchment area, it gets collected in dams, it goes to water treatment works, it goes to reservoirs, it gets pumped around in the city, it is being consumed, it then goes to wastewater treatment works, it goes out in marine outfalls, and you also have your treated effluent. Now, all of these things have bits of text and information in them, so people can click on any of these things and then read up. So if I'm a user and I say, I want to learn what's, what's the deal with water, I go through there, maybe you can click on one. Um, you go through that section and all you do is you just click and you say, okay, let me read up on that. Uh, short paragraph. In Cape Town, we were very lucky that with the water crisis, some great documentation was developed by the city on exactly this, on explaining what is this infrastructure and all the processes around water. So that's the top part. Then as you go down, you'll see that the next section shows some of the data sets that we have on water. Um, this is something that will take time to populate, but we start by just putting in what have, what have we found so far. And you can see here, maybe you can do preview of the other one. So there's an interesting data set on, on oh sorry, in the preview, um, on the wastewater effluent. It's in the open data portal of the city of Cape Town. And it has data on what has been going through each of, in terms of volume, through each of these wastewater treatment works. This is the kind of information that's incredibly interesting for a uh, researcher point of view. But if you don't know where to go, it takes time, it takes effort to find this data. And when you download it, it's difficult to process it. And here, with a couple of clicks, you can just explore. You can see which is the biggest uh, wastewater treatment work. How has volumes changed over time? So that's the kind of stuff that we try to show people in a more visualized, visually appealing way, while also allowing people to dig deeper. So for a data set, if you go down a bit, uh, in the form of up, um, if you look at this, this profile, you can see where it came from. What was the original source? You can see some data quality indicators. You can go to a table and get all the, the numbers. You can download data. And you can see if you want to replicate this data set, what are the steps I need to take? And sometimes the steps are go and download. Sometimes the steps are follow these 20 procedures to transform that into what you need. But we need to share that with people so that we can continue to um, update the information and others can see how it came about. So um, there's a number of, as you can see, a number of different ways of visualizing data. And all that's needed is that a user uploads a data set in a particular format. Because remember, we want this to be crowdsourced. You don't need to have a, a degree in programming or visualization to get this. So all a user does is they format data in a particular order. Column A is the time frame, column B is the place, column C is the, the volume, something like that. Um, copy from a spreadsheet into a field, click next, review their data, describe how they got it, and the system does this. It, the system creates this overview, shows this, creates the, the different ways of, of visualizing data. If you geo-reference it, it can put it on a map. No, we'll show it later. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's the data set part, and there's, there's much more to it, uh, but just to give you a brief overview. We also very much into this mapping thing and to put things on maps. So as long as we have information about where a wastewater or water infrastructure is located, we can have the system generate a map of that. So if you go further down. So here you see the different pieces of infrastructure that exist in the water sector, at least that we have identified. Um, and as you go down, depending on our internet, um, you'll see a map pop up um, that displays all those different pieces of wastewater infrastructure. So you can see 
where remember we saw earlier in the same press in this in the same block we saw the map of all the wastewater treatment works. That is a, an image that's great to see, but it's difficult to get hold of it. Now, once someone has uploaded the information here, anybody can get hold of this information. You can browse it. Maybe you can just if you see on the right hand side, it's the different types of infrastructures you can you can click and filter. And what you can do is you can click on any of them. You'll see their profile. And maybe just open a random one. So here we can see this is Clip Heuvel. It's a wastewater treatment works, yeah. Um, and actually, I've opened the one for the Cape Flats because that's where we're at. So as we go up, this is each of the pieces of infrastructure has an individual profile. So this shows where we are right now. This is Cape Flats wastewater treatment works. Someone up, well, in this case it was me, but it could be anybody. Someone uploads data on the GPS points, what this is, what the name is, and then the system creates this profile. So it puts it on the map, it shows a satellite image. The moment someone else, or the same person, uploads a data set and says this is related to this place, the system pulls it together and says, okay, that's linked to this wastewater treatment work. So the same data set we saw before of all the wastewater treatment works, it's one upload, but it's then separated out and filtered out so people see it in different ways. Um, yeah, and if someone takes a photo, it can be uploaded there, and we can browse and see what's happening at that place. So that gives you an idea, if you go back to the, um, the water page. Oh, sorry, I got a waste. So it gives you an idea of what's happening in the water sector. This is replicable to any sector. So we've done the same with waste. So same idea, describe the sector, get some text on there, people can orient themselves, um, put data sets on there that is are available on what's happening in waste. If you go further down, show what's the infrastructure that exists around waste. We have one landfill right across from here. You can see it on the map. Um, you can open it. You can see what the volumes are that are in there. Uh, oh, and what you haven't shown, at the same time, we pull through those documents that have been uploaded that are related to waste, to water, to whatever it is. So, yeah, I think this is enough to give you an idea. I invite you to check out the website and see what's happening. Still a prototype, we're still working on it, but it gives you the idea of where we're going. Now, our goal, our end goal, isn't to just have a place to centralize data. It's useful, and it, it, I, we think it helps a lot of people, and we also think it's something that will motivate others to contribute who now not contribute to, contributing to this conversation, to make it so much more accessible to view it or to contribute. Now, great. What do we want in the end? Remember, we want to move ahead in policy and practice. We feel that this is a useful tool for policymakers to visualize and to, to see things. But what we really want is that we can create tools that help decision making. And if you think of this kind of data, there are a number of tools that you can invent that help people and that allow for a much easier way of running a model. And to give a very simple example, let's say there is data on what infrastructure is available, say, on waste, on wastewater. So we have data on what the technology is at each of these wastewater treatment works. We, we heard it earlier, and we can have it in the system. Well, if we have data on what each of these technologies implies in terms of environmental impact, of course, there's a different impact if you use this or that or that. We put in the system what technology is being used, and we have in the system what the impact is of each of them. Then we know what is your current impact of the technology that you have. Add to that a database of what other technologies are there and what could that mean. Add to that information about what the cost is and what you could do is you, you, you press a button and you say, show me what we could do, what we could upgrade or change in the city and what the impact is of that. So if we swap out, even say landfill, if we, if we talk about incineration, we have examples of cities who do incineration that has a cost, that has an impact, that needs a certain structure. But if we have tools like this, then we can have those tools help us understand what options we have and how do they compare in terms of cost, in terms of impact, in terms of whatever we can, can think of. We're still very early on in that conversation, but we have um, a colleague of ours who does work on islands, who is, um, with whom we are developing metabolism of islands, who has um, uh, experience engaging with government and a lot of ideas on, on these models, and that's the kind of stuff we want to work towards. It's going to take time, but this is step one, or step zero, and we have step two to six in our head, but we don't know if that really makes sense, and we really hope today to also get ideas from the other side of the table. So if you are a policymaker, if you're a decision maker, could be a city level, could also be at a corporate level. Companies are also decision makers. 
So we'd love to learn what are tools that could help you if you think of having data sets and infrastructure information and whatever you can envision. We are keen to build, but we are not sure what we should be building. So you let us know. You brainstorm with us. And we think that's the way we can try and co-create something that helps improve our system, but helps, most importantly, your decision making. And like I said, it's early on in the conversation, but for us, that's really a, a key thing we hope to get out of here to at least start that kind of conversation. And keep us in mind, we are a collaborative platform. We, are, um, we try to get funding here and there, wherever we can, but whenever we have the option, we just do things. It's not about funding, it's about getting things done. And the cool thing is, if you do it for one city, it becomes available to another city. So let's push so Brussels wants lots of things and then Cape Town can get them as well. Um, yeah, so I think that's an overview of the platform that we have. Visit it, check it out, give us constructive criticism, and let us know what you think and what you need. So, and start uploading, yes, exactly. If you have data, give it to us, put it in here. There, is, there, is, there are videos that show you how to do it. There's all kinds of different things you can put on there from, you know, even if you're not an, an expert on this, we want to know if you see something that's interesting in terms of urban metabolism, just put a photo on there. That's already very interesting and very useful. So there's lots you can do and contribute. Okay, thank you. Okay.